I'm going to review three music offerings, and they all three have a few similar features, but there are some very specific social features in my favorite. Spoiler alert here, Spotify wins. Now, here's the free version. You get some ads, which are a little annoying, but not overly obtrusive. And here are uh, my favorite features. People can share music directly with you. You have an inbox. You can sync your devices, your iPod, your iPhone, or your Android, directly with this free version. Works like a champ. We'll import your iTunes stuff directly into your iPhone or your Android phone, and it works flawlessly. I've been using it. The only thing you can't do is stream, but the free version of this product will take the music wirelessly from your laptop, and I dig that. That's kind of cool. Now, my favorite part about this particular feature, uh, the what I call the social aspect of this product, is that I can subscribe to lists, which means as my friend adds new music to that list, I get access to it. And with the premium version, I can actually use that list offline. That's super cool. Once I subscribe to it, it becomes a part of my ongoing listening list, even in the free version. There are some songs that are disallowed under the free version. You do have to upgrade in order to get much of the music available. But if you'll notice, you'll see all of these songs here that are in white. I can play those even with the free version. The free version is a pretty cool product. Again, you can sync your entire iTunes library, all the MP3s or digital songs that you have on your local computer, and you can sync that with your iPod, your iPhone, or your Android device. The inbox feature works in the free version, and you do get to access the social feature, although there are some songs that are not available unless you pay the premium fee. So what are the premium fees? Let's go look at that. Spotify, you're going to see there's a trend here. Ten bucks for the premium per month, and then five bucks for what they call the unlimited package here. What do you miss out on if you only pay the five bucks? Well, you don't get the streaming feature on your mobile device. You don't get music when you're not connected to the internet. In other words, you can't listen to your friend's songs if you're offline. Uh, you don't get the enhanced sound quality. I haven't tested that yet, but I am looking forward to it. And there are some songs that are not available in the $5 a month version versus the $10 a month version. The $10 a month version, of course, is the whiz-bang end-all. And it does include the enhanced sound quality in the offline mode, as well as your ability to share your tracks with friends. Although we've seen that with the free version, the sharing feature is pretty cool as it is. The second product I want to look at is the Google Music product, or Music Beta, as it's called right now. This works pretty much the same. You have an import process where you can import your playlists from iTunes. You can listen. It actually syncs your MP3s to all of your different devices, including your mobile phone. And right now, this is just one mode, which is the, uh, the music beta mode. They don't yet have a, a premium version of this, but I'm sure that they will come out with a premium version. Mog is the third one I want to review. There is, again, a premium version, which is 10 bucks a month, a basic version, which is 5 bucks a month. Again, the difference here is that you do not have the offline access to music, meaning you have to have broadband in order to listen to your music. Uh, you can create unique radio stations. And I'll just show you real quick. This is a pretty cool product, even at the $5 a month. I don't think there's a free version of this. There's a trial version that I'm using right now. But 5 bucks a month, I can search the name of a band. They have a pretty substantial offering of the music. There's not a lot that's blacked out. Uh, you do have... A, a feature where they push all three of these music services, push artists and releases. And I'm sure that's part of their licensing deal and their marketing deal with the record labels. Uh, you have the editor's picks, you have the new releases, top artists, top albums, top tracks. The same old sort of, you know, promotional music world kind of thing you expect. But the cool thing is you can create your own playlists. And for the five bucks a month, it's not a bad way to listen to music if you have a broadband connection. Again, you need a $10 a month service in order to get that offline mode. 
that's my review. And just to recap, my favorite in this is Spotify. There we go. Spotify. To recap, the reason I love Spotify is there's a social aspect to it, the public playlists, and my experience with syncing this to my mobile device, I'm using a Droid, has been flawless. I think the premium, the upgrade for 10 bucks a month is probably worth it. If you have a family of listeners, especially kids in your household, this will definitely expose them to more music and will definitely save you money.